I wanted this to be a history book. I mean, that was the purpose of, of writing it in the first place. Uh, some of you thought that the book could have been more controversial, more juicy, as they say. Uh, well, I argued about that, and especially as they said, I wanted to be history. Then I get a letter from the lawyers from DeCapo saying, you better watch what you say, because you don't want to get sued. And so, so I had the, the both of them going. I really consider myself as the last man standing, the last person who was involved with the league from the beginning. Now, obviously, I wasn't there in 1920, but I knew the people that were. I was able to talk to them, did talk to them, experience. Uh, you know, George Hallis was a tremendous guy. Uh, we used to get in a few arguments, especially my father, but I uh, would argue about things uh, with George, and uh, he, he was a great guy, and I have nothing but tremendous respect for him. He did everything in the, as far as the uh, NFL was concerned. He, he was a player, he was a coach, he, was a, he sold tickets, he uh, used to put people on the visitor's bench and you'd end up getting in fights with them and things like that. And I mean, they're things that I remember. And as I say, talking with him, talking with uh, Curly Lambeau, talking with uh, George Marshall, who, who really came pretty much at the same time, but Marshall was such a strong figure and did so much in the game. They, a lot of times they say that he and Hallis were really the ones that were guiding the thing and uh, you know trying to take over. That was their big battle when uh, Bert Bell died and uh, Pete Rozelle came in as a compromise candidate. Hallis and Marshall, they wanted to put uh, a guy by the name of Austin Gonzell, who was Bell's assistant. They thought they could run him and the other members of the league didn't go for it. And so that, that's what happened there. You know, people would talk to me about losing the Steelers' loss so, for so many years. Uh, from the very, very beginning, uh, every game that I went to, and most of the players that I, you know, knew were all fun to be with, and, you know, the, the seasons in each game were, were really something special. But uh, my father was, uh, he was really, uh, you know, a special person. and. Uh, he was, uh, he did things, he contributed to this team in more ways than, than people know. I mean, he, you know, we get letters now from fans this 75th year where people were coming back. Some of the people were even too old to get back, but they all talk about him and talk about, uh, you know, what he did. Uh, there would be guys that would be down and out or a player would say, gee, I, I'm trying to get a new car, I'm trying to get a house, I'm trying to do this and that, and he'd lend them the money. And uh, I don't know if I told this story in the, uh, in the book, but uh, Bobby Lane, who was a tremendous guy, and this is when my father was still active, you know, called him in at the end, you know, near the end of the season, and said, Bobby, we have to get a contract for next year. Bobby said, well, that, that's nothing. And he said, no, we, ha we have to do this. And he says, well, you know, how, what do you want? And Lane said, do you have a contract? And he said, uh, yeah. So he said, give it to me. And he signed it at the bottom, Robert Lane, and gave it back to him and said, fill it out now. I mean, <laughs> you don't get that happening too often. I mean, he just had to feel, he would go around on a, a Sunday morning and talk to every player and just talk to them, not about the game, about how they were and things like that, and that was a big thing. But the, they sent a guy in. He must have taken 500 pictures, and he took that one. And I didn't. Even, I don't even like that one. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, that was that's how that got there. He even he did have a a, a pair of glasses with no glass in them. He said, "Well, you can wear these." I said, "No, I'd rather not wear any." Heinz Ward really wanted to play with us, and it wasn't that difficult. It was a question of this happens often that both sides get to be hard-headed, and you can't get it done. And you know, he says, I said in the book that I called Jerome and says we got to get him there. He says Heinz is tough. I said you get him to come to the to the place and we'll just talk. And uh, you know, it was just me, and I wasn't talking 
you know, trying to sign him or anything like that. I was just saying, we got to get this done. And he said, we have always been fair. And I says, well, we can get it done. And then I went to Art and to uh, uh, Kevin. And I said, go and talk to him. I said, he'll sign. And it was pretty much that. I mean, uh, you know, Hines is, uh, is, is a good person. And, you know, he wanted to get it done. And it was just what I said. Well, you know, I don't go in and sit in the draft uh, room and watch all the films and things like that. But I did go in with the quarterbacks that particular year. And I watched, uh, you know, Rivers and uh, all the players that were there, uh, uh, you know, Manning and, and Roethlisberger. So they sort of didn't think we were going to be able to get any quarterback. And I, I just felt that uh, that Ben really looked good. I thought that comparing those other two guys or the other people that were there, that he was excellent. And, you know, I talked to them and things like that. Yeah, well, then they went on, and it was now getting close to our draft time. And they were talking about somebody else, you know, and I brought his name up. I said, hey, we've got to think about Ben Roethlisberger. I said, he's really good. And then we got into the discussion, and... Uh, we came to the conclusion, and it was uh, it was generally accepted by all. But you know, it, it was going astray for a while. And I had seen that before. You know that that that, that it happened with us with uh, Danny Marino when uh, we did not draft him. And <laughs> the reason we didn't draft him is I was too honest. I told the guys out there who gave me the idea, and it was John Clayton. And when I said John Clayton, they said, "Are you kidding?" but his ideas were the best. <laughs> well, I don't know that he convinced my father. That that's where we have the disagreement. My father was thinking of it, definitely said, you gotta give this a lot of thought. I was for giving it no thought. I was totally against it. We fought with these guys for six years. Now they say they want us to go with them. And so I felt that that was a, a real, real problem. And. Uh, but my father did say, hey, we got to think about this. He said, it's going to be a lot easier to receive the money than pay it. And, uh, and then I said, hey, they, you know, just, just all the things that happen, what our fans think and things like this. And then the story, the fact is we went out for dinner that same night. Uh, Pete Rosell, he had the tendency to make you stay in the room. Don't let you out until you get a, something done that was tough. Well, at this particular time, it was late. We hadn't had, you know, they brought in lunch and things like that. So he said, go ahead, go to lunch or go to dinner and be back, at, you know, like two hours. So we go and when we went back, we walked into his office and he gave me a piece of paper that was honestly that big. And it had our division. It had Cleveland, Pittsburgh, Cincinnati and Houston. And with that, I knew because I knew what the schedule was going to be. I knew that this was going to be the best thing for us. And my father says, what's that? And I handed it to him and said, that's your new division. I knew the arguments were over then. That's the way it went. 